Good morning and welcome back to Jeffrey Repair. In front of us, we've actually got an MSI Z790 Tamahawk Wi-Fi. This is not actually a repair video, but more a diagnostics and confirmation of a very large issue with these boards in particular. Large amounts of recalls, RMAs, people having to return and replace. And we just wanted to address the actual PCH problem that they've had. We're assuming that it was a factory fault and not a heatsink issue, which we'll delve into in just a moment. With these boards, with this particular problem, you'll exhibit one of two issues. Either the board will fail to post completely, so when you're trying to power it on, no reaction whatsoever. Or the second one is it will turn on, you'll have a little CPU light, it won't cycle through any of the lights, and it'll just stick there for however long it wants to. Depends on the damage of the PCH. So let's get right into disassembling the board. Out of the many that we have, this one has, actually has not been disassembled before. We wanted to keep this one fresh so we could show you exactly what it looks like without any prior tampering. Okay, with that removed, the heatsink should just fall right off as it has. Now, before even removing the factory paste, you should be able to see a light mark just going diagonally like this. Yeah, we'll bring it under the microscope now. Okay, so closer up now. It's very faint, but just down here, if we grab a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol and start rubbing away at that, you'll slowly start to see the crack that we're looking for. With that fully clean now, you can see that there are a handful of scratches from here, even a chink over there, going across, one up here. It's basically all across the chip. It's not a good look, a bunch of scratches, an actual crack to the die. And we want to just show you also what it looks like under the thermal camera. Power on the system in three, two, one. Okay, you can see the reaction of the isopropyl alcohol and also hopefully the video on the thermal camera. Now that you've seen that demonstration of the PCH damage, uh, we wanted to mention that, yeah, we actually think that this is a more widespread issue than most might think. We're not sure of the exact number of boards, but we'd assume the number is roughly in the low hundreds. We have an understanding that MSI's quality control is fantastic, is held to a very high standard. Um, they're even one of the few companies that actually send their PCBs, every single one, through a specific machine that takes a very high quality photo of the PCB itself. You have to keep in mind that even this one extra step adds a lot of extra time, effort and cost into the whole production of these boards. So it's not something that you, you should take lightly. And the main reason they do this is for cases where they actually need to cross-examine for RMA or boards that have been sent back to them for whatever reason it might be. Another unique step done by MSI is its additional photography step. And this is the one that might get you in trouble if you ever RMA a board. So what MSI does is they have a, as part of the line, there's a camera that's hooked up that takes really high resolution photos of the front of the board. If you were to RMA the board at some point and there's maybe a set of missing capacitors or something, when MSI gets the board back, they'll compare the board against the original reference photo and see if something went wrong. This is ideally used to figure out if something was wrong at the factory when it went out, so it can then be tracked down to the machine and that machine can be fixed. Alternatively, if you do try to pull one over, uh, theoretically they would be able to find out. So it's got two purposes there, but uh, of course, who's to say if something happened in shipping before it got to you? With what we have, the only suspect we could test on this board is, of course, the heatsink that actually sits on top of the PCB, sorry, the PCH, with the little thermal paste instead of a thermal pad. After many checks into the design of it, comparing it with others, even from those of a later generation, those that don't have cracked PCHs, we couldn't find a difference. It's uniform, it's flat, it's not warped in any way. 
when we took one of these heat sinks from one of the failed boards where the PCH was cracked and placed it onto a board that was fully working, same generation, same model, no issues whatsoever. We even tried to press the heatsink around like this, same same thing, the PCH was not affected, did not have the same scratching or cracks that this one had, even when we did press down quite hard. From that, we assumed something happened to these silicon chips somewhere along the factory process. MSI told us they weren't aware of any such issue within their production line. However, there are many others on top of us and our customers that have actually experienced this issue, which we'll post here on this video. Uh, experiencing different cases of the board not working, of recalls, of cancelled orders uh, and returns for the specific board. So what next? Thankfully we've worked closely with MSI and they've given us two promising options. The first would be to have the PCH chips replaced by ourselves. However the downside to this option is that they requested that the dead PCH chips would be removed first, packaged and then sent to them initially before they have their set sent to us. This simply results in these disassembled boards taking up a large amount of shelf space for a very long time. Uh, not only that, they'll also be going through additional and unnecessary thermal stress. That brings us on to option two, where MSI have very kindly offered us to have the PCH replaced on all the boards that we've got, sent to them straight to their factory in Poland, as it's the closest uh, location to us, we're located in the UK. That's what we've agreed on, so these boards will be sent out shortly to then go through that process. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.